Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look, uh, a deeper look at Newton's second law, and we're going to look at how to solve problems uh, with Newton's second law. Um, solving for forces, solving for accelerations, perhaps even solving for mass. Okay, so first up, Newton's second law. Uh, it is F is equal to MA. Uh, forces are the reasons that things accelerate, and forces are also the reason that things don't accelerate. But we need to be a little bit more specific here, because uh, most of the time we're not dealing with just one force acting on an object. Uh, and so we really are talking about the net force acting on the object. That little funny symbol means the sum of all of the forces acting on the object. And because forces are vectors, really what we're looking at is the sum of all of the force vectors acting on the object are going to equal the object's mass times its acceleration. And just a reminder that acceleration is also a vector, uh, which means that the direction of the net force is the same as the direction of the acceleration. All right. Now, there's two possibilities here. Uh, either the net force is going to equal zero. Okay, if that is the case, if the sum of all of the forces acting on an object is equal to zero, let's look at an example. Uh, here's a free body diagram. Let's say we've got gravity going down, and we've got some sort of maybe drag force going up. Uh, whoops, didn't draw that the same, did I? Same length, roughly, yep. Okay, so uh, we have a drag force going up. Um, the drag force is equal in length and opposite in direction to the gravity force. So if up is the positive direction, then these two forces, uh, the positive drag, the negative gravity, would cancel each other out and give us a net vector sum of zero. So there are two possibilities for the motion of this object. Either it is at rest, which with a drag force would be pretty unlikely if there is a drag force acting on something, or it's moving at a constant speed moving with constant velocity. And since there's a drag force here, that's the more likely of the two scenarios uh, of this thing. We've got the drag force equal and opposite to the gravity force. Something is falling down at a constant velocity. Let's say ping pong ball falling through the air uh, at what's called terminal velocity. Okay, If something's moving with a constant velocity, it's not accelerating. That means the net force is zero. We also might call those balanced forces. So if the forces are balanced, we have no acceleration. All right. Um, the other possibility here is the net force acting on an object is not equal to zero. All right. That's when we get an acceleration. So an example here would be, let's say we've got a gravity force that is larger than the drag force, which means that this object is accelerating, uh, and it is accelerating in the direction of the non-zero net force. Since gravity is bigger than drag, the unbalanced force, the net force, acts in the down direction here. And that tells me that the object is accelerating. Okay. Um, one important thing that it does not tell us, it does not tell us what direction the object is moving specifically. Okay. So I can't necessarily, just based on a free body diagram, give you the direction of motion. I can only give for sure the direction of the acceleration. Okay, so in this case, with this free body diagram, I can tell you for sure that the acceleration is downward. Okay, because it's a drag force and drag force generally acts in the opposite direction of the velocity, we could probably pretty confidently say this object is moving downward, but we can't say for sure unless we have other information. So if there is an acceleration, um, we're going to have two choices here. It's speeding up or it's slowing down. I guess actually I'll add the third flavor of acceleration here. It could also be changing direction. Because a change in direction is a change in the velocity vector and acceleration is defined as change in velocity over time. So those are the three flavors of acceleration. Uh, it could be either speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. We're going to focus on speeding up or slowing down for right now. 
Before we can talk about problem solving with Newton's second law, we need to be able to calculate the force of gravity acting on an object. And the force of gravity is also known as the weight. Notice I did not say mass. Weight and mass are two different things, and we're going to see that here momentarily. So if F is equal to ma and gravity is a force, then the force of gravity is equal to the mass of an object times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's how you would calculate the force of gravity on an object. Take its mass and multiply it by the acceleration due to gravity. On the surface of Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice I didn't say negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, we are going to let um, our sign conventions dictate what direction this force is going. We're not going to put in negative 9.8 for g. It is just a number, 9.8. Okay, so m times 9.8 would give us the force of gravity or the weight of an object on the Earth. Okay, now notice that mass is in there. Mass is part of the weight, but it is not the weight in and of itself. Okay, mass is actually the measurement of the inertia of an object. And inertia gets to Newton's first law. Inertia is an object's resistance to being accelerated. All right, so even if you were in outer space on the International Space Station and you had two objects of the same size, you could figure out which one had a bigger mass simply by shaking them back and forth. If you shake them back and forth, you are going to feel the resistance to being accelerated. And the one that has a greater resistance to being accelerated has the greater mass. All right? So inertia and mass, they're not going to change. Okay? They are not dependent on the location of the object. An object has the same mass on Earth as it would have on the space station, as it would have on the moon. Shake them back and forth in any location, and you're going to feel no difference. All right? However, the weight of an object also depends on the acceleration due to gravity. So it would be different in space. It would be different on the surface of Earth. It would be different on the surface of the moon because the acceleration due to gravity is different at those different locations. All right, so that's a big distinction there between mass and weight. And we need to be precise in our language when we're talking about that. All right, so now that we know how to calculate the weight of an object, the force of gravity in an object, we can start trying to solve problems using Newton's second law. Okay, so here's our setup. Um, we've got a 500 gram cart sitting on a low friction track, and let's say that we're going to pull it to the right with five Newtons of force. All right, remember Newton is the unit for force. And um, lots of different questions that we can ask about what's going on here. We could ask, what is the acceleration of the cart going to be? We can ask, uh, what's the weight of the cart? Uh, we could ask what the normal force acting on the cart is. So the first step in answering any of these questions is to draw a free body diagram for the forces acting on the cart. So that dot represents the center of mass of the cart. We take care of gravity first. Uh, that's F sub G. What else is touching the cart? The track is. So the track is applying a normal force. And since the cart is not accelerating vertically, I'm going to draw the normal force equal to the gravity force. And then we've got this pull force acting to the right. I said it was a low friction track, so we're not going to have any friction acting in any direction. So now we've got a correct free body diagram. What can I tell you based on this free body diagram? That this cart's going to accelerate to the right. Okay? If I also knew that it started from rest, then I could also add, say, it's, it's not just accelerating to the right, it's also uh, moving to the right. It has a velocity vector pointing to the right. Okay, so let's answer the first question I posed. Um, no, let's answer the, the gravity question. What is the force of gravity acting on the object? Well, that's just simply equal to m times g. All right, uh, the standard unit for mass, though, is kilograms, so you've got to convert that grams into kilograms. So we've got 0.5 kilograms times 9.8. Notice again, I did not put in a negative there. All right, g is just a number on Earth, 9.8. Uh, so we end up with a unit, uh, so, sorry, an answer here of 4.9 newtons. And newton is a derived unit, kilograms times meters divided by seconds squared, because it's mass times acceleration. OK, so the second question we can now answer is, what is the normal force acting on the object. So whenever you're using uh, Newton's second law, the first step is draw a free body diagram. And then the second step is go to Newton's second law. The net force is equal to ma. 
Now the normal force is acting in the y direction. So I'm specifically right now going to look at the forces acting in the y direction. All right. Um, let's go ahead and over here define our positive directions. Up is positive and to the right is positive. Okay, which means that the normal force is going to be positive and the force of gravity is going to be negative. And I need to remember that when I put it in to Newton's second law. So on the left hand side we need the vector sum of all of the forces. We're only concerned with the forces in the y direction here. So we've got the normal force acting in the positive direction and we have gravity acting in the negative direction. Okay, and what is the acceleration in the y direction? It's not accelerating in the y direction. It's not accelerating up or down. So this is zero. All right, and it's pretty easy now to see, even I can do this algebra, normal force is equal to the gravitational force. And since we already found the gravitational force was 4.9 newtons, the normal force is also 4.9 newtons. All right. Um, so next question we could ask would be, what is the acceleration of the cart? Uh, we have unbalanced forces acting in the horizontal direction. So we're going to have an acceleration in the horizontal direction. And again, we go to Newton's second law. I already drew the free body diagram. The net force in the x direction is going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. We only have one force acting in the x direction. The push force, it's in the positive direction, so I'm going to leave it as positive and that's going to equal the mass of the cart times whatever the acceleration ends up being. So the push force was given, it's 5 newtons, and that's going to equal the mass, which was 0 0.5 kilograms times the acceleration in the x direction. So we do division here, 5 divided by 0.5, and that's going to give us our acceleration in the x direction.